Hey guys, Todd Helms here with Wingmen, bringing you a little a Zoom call actually with Barton Ramsey from Southern Oak Kennels. When we, he and I sit down and we discuss Hondo's progress so far, we were right at about the, the beginning of the end of week four and the beginning of week five in that transition period in the 52 plus Cornerstone Gun Dog training. And I wanted to sit down and pick his brain a little bit and just have a conversation as well. So I hope you enjoy this. There's some good pointers in there if you're raising a puppy or if you're starting to train a dog. There's some really good stuff. Barton's got some really valuable insight and it was eye-opening for me. We were able to tweak things a little bit with Hondo from our conversation and it was a good, good conversation and a good time. I hope you enjoy. So without further ado, here you go. Barton, how are you, man? Record you, uh, no, leave the meeting. Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm hanging out, yeah. I'm walking dogs. It is uh, officially, um, and we're here in Mississippi. Obviously, you came down here, it was warm. Um, we have not had a normal summer of heat, we've had a very mild spring and summer until about three days ago, and oh. it showed up and punched us in the face. I mean, it is hot. I mean, it's, it is the type of summer heat that is just unbearable. I want to say that yesterday, it was no wind, 96 degrees, 104 real feel humidity up above 65, 70%. It was, I mean, it was rough. That's so, brutal. That's yeah. brutal. That's brutal. Yeah. It's just, it, obviously we don't have your humidity as we were joking about when we were down there, you know, we were like, walking around with wet towels over our heads, it felt like. But uh, it's been 100 degrees, 100 plus here every day for the last couple of weeks. And it's it's just dragon's breath. You know, the county fair is going on and we I took the kiddos and the wife last night. And, uh, and it was, yeah, we're sitting there watching pig wrestling in the, in the grandstands and the wind's blowing and it, it feels like smog is breathing on you the whole time. Oh. You know what I mean? It's like, it was brutal. So, wow. I think it's the same everywhere. Everybody I've talked to said that said it's just heat. That's I went up to um, the, the grand opening of the city depot in Bozeman. And, How'd that uh, go? I was, it was a blast. I mean, a whole other conversation. But yeah. Super proud for those guys. And, uh, I mean, we had a really good time. Thursday night, did a VIP dinner. A friend that I haven't seen since the pandemic started, which was super fun. And then Saturday they did a big, you know, grand opening deal uh, for the public, and a bunch of us gave. You know, I talked about dogs and people, all our friends that you know. At talked about deer hunting in Missouri and Kansas, and it was, it was really cool to educate some of the. But there were a lot of folks from Bozeman that just were kind of new. You know, they were like, "What's going on here? What is this?" So it was very educational, fun. Anyway. I I haven't been to Bozeman in a while, and I didn't have a car, and I was I was like 1.3 miles from the depot. And Thursday, I said I'm just gonna I'm just gonna walk. I need the steps. I've been flying all day. It's Bozeman. I had not even looked at the weather. I'm like, <laughs> how, bad, how bad can it be, bro? I got like halfway there, and I was like, I'm dying. It's like 100 <laughs> degrees. It was not, it was no humidity, but I was like, I, 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 it's 15 degrees warmer there that day than it was back home. And man, it was anyway. So yeah, I think it's just been everywhere. It's, it's here now for sure. Yeah. So. There's no doubt about that. No doubt about that. You know, and you and I have had conversations in the past about working dogs in this heat, obviously for you guys, you got to do it first thing in the morning yeah. and, you know, maybe get the dog wet. So they're evaporating the whole time. We have a luxury here. I took the pups down to the river. I've been taking them down the river in the evenings when it's smoking hot. But I get out of work, you know, it's 103 degrees, but the river temp's like 60, you know. And they eat it up, you know, they eat it up because they're like, my old dog feels good to get him out of the heat. And Hondo just likes playing in the water at this point. I was, I've been real, and I'm curious to get your opinion on this, but I've been real kind of letting him do the water thing at his own pace. I, yeah. I, I pushed Mac a little bit when he was young, when he was Hondo's age, I never threw him in the water or anything, anything like that, but I was, I encouraged him, I think at a time when the water in early spring, when the water pulled and yeah. 
to this day, he's he likes the water, but he's not like crazy about it. And right. I think that had an impact on that. You know, and I get in and we get in those later seasons. Go ahead. No, it definitely will. Um, and you're right. I mean, I would rather, let's just say you brought home a puppy in October, September, October, and it already started getting cold where you live. I would rather postpone and, and delay water intro until that dog is almost nine, 10 months old. Right. Push it and try to force the issue with cold water. You just want it to always be a positive experience. So I've got a little puppy here who is um, the same age as Hondo. Maybe I had her when you were here. She may be three or four weeks older. Magic. Um, yeah. And I'm on back here and I never, I've, I've not asked her to get in until just recently. Everything has been just when the other dogs get in, her walking and playing and she eats it up, loves it. And it wasn't until I noticed that when she when she wanted to get in the water, she hit it with a lot of this tenacity just going in. That's when I started giving her her first retrieves in the water. I have used retrieves to encourage dogs that were a little unsure about water, but they love to retrieve. Yeah. So use that. But of course, everybody knows get in with them, that kind of stuff. But if you can get a dog that just like on his own really loves getting in the water, then when you come to the formal parts of training with water, it'll, it'll go much easier. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, obviously part of the socialization process for us has been, we do a lot of camping and stuff in the mountains to get out of the heat that we were talking about. Yeah. And, uh, right by creeks and small streams and stuff like that. And, and around lakes and ponds and just kind of letting him do it on his own. And man, there, there was not a lot of hesitation right from the start. He's, as you know, we talked about when I picked him up, he's, he's a pretty confident little guy. Yeah. And yeah. He's, not, he's not afraid of much. And, um, that adds, that adds a level of complexity for me because I've got to look out for him even that much more because sure. the one thing that's nice I have noticed is, and maybe you can speak to this with he's, he's daring and he's brazen, but he's not reckless. It's in, it's interesting. He's got a head on it on his shoulders. In that, you know, he'll watch. I'll open the tailgate on the pickup, and Mac and I'll come out, jump down. Hondo's like, I don't know about that. Mm. It's the basement stairs. He's like, no, nope, not going to do that. You know, he he's sure. it, it's funny what he's cautious about. Right. Mm. Yeah, I, they're all different. Um, I've got one here that's uh, half brother to Hondo who, I mean, he runs into me. He just, everything is 5,000 miles an hour, plowing through, hitting stuff, just no, not a concern at all. And then I've got another one unrelated that everything is, I'm going to have some caution here. Everything, everything in life. And he loves retreat. Love it goes hard after retreats, but just in general in life, everything is. Uh, I'm gonna look at that. I'm not sure. Oh, you yeah. like you want in the middle, which is nice. I and mean, you want a dog who is fearless, but you also want a dog who's processing as much as dogs process. You know, right. you, you tell the ones that are problem solvers pretty early on, where it's not just plow through it and see what happens. It's like, all right, I gotta gotta take a second here, figure out what I'm gonna do. And I like that. Sounds like sounds like a good mix. Yeah, so far it's been phenomenal. Um, as he's bright, you know, we we figured that out on the on the way home. Yeah, you know, in, the, in the RV with him, we threw him in this, into a pretty unique situation, a long road trip, and asking him to you know go potty in the shower in the RV on on pads or, and yeah. things like that, because there was a lot of places that you know we couldn't just fuel up anywhere with that thing. We had a lot of truck stops. Sure. And I remember one stop in particular, it was somewhere in, I think it was in Missouri and it was at, right at dark. And I ended up actually carrying him like a half a mile out into some plowed field yeah. away from the truck stop, yeah. you know, yeah. but it was important, but yeah. you know, it was, it's interesting though. The socialization I think has gone really, really well. Um, one area that I was cautious about, is is around other dogs I have, i've had him around other dogs obviously he's around Mackinac all the time and they are buddies you know it, it started out with max going 
who is this? I don't like this puppy, you know? And now they're like wrestling in the yard all the time and they just, yeah. they, they love each other. Yeah. But I've, inter- I've introduced other strange dogs that I know kind of sparingly. And it's been really interesting to watch his reaction to them about what I expected. Very timid and measured at first. And within five minutes, playing, romping, jumping, excited. So that's been nice. He's not just scared of them all the, all the time. Good. I like it, man. That's awesome. That's okay. awesome. Uh, Good. You know, again, you want middle of the road on that kind of stuff. You don't want the dog that just has a bulldozer that, you know, you pop them off. That I don't, I don't endorse these particular practices, but he took him to puppy daycare and he's the bully that just runs around knocking all the other dogs around. You right. don't want that, but you also don't want the dog that rolls over on his back, pees, and lays there submissively for 20 minutes while the other dogs run around. You know, you want And I have seen zero submissive peeing from him with That's people, good. with other dogs, none whatsoever, which is nice. Which is nice. But so we are on uh, we are on week five. Um, I had a surgical procedure last week that I, I didn't get to work with him as much as I wanted to. And yeah. so I'm going to repeat week five with him. He took to place in like two sessions. Yeah. That's super common. And I think that um, if you notice, you know, the, the, the early phases of learning, it's not so much about place. In fact, you'll have to, when he gets to adolescence, go back and reteach place. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's going to have to have some more formal structure to it the reason place is used so early is really more of teaching them how to learn you know it's like this is such an obvious step to get on this thing that is such an easy um device or method or route to teach you that proper behavior equals equals reward and we mark it so sit is pretty easy most people use sit like that i mean just your average person is just i'm training my dog i've I've never never done it or read a book whatever like because sit is a behavior and most of the times puppies will 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 do it but if you'll notice a lot of puppies will sit if they don't get the treat right away they'll spin around and then they'll run over here run back it's just they're giving you behaviors like i want the treat whereas getting up on that place board is such a like oh i get on that thing like it's really clear cut right and uh anyway so yeah most people it's, it's with any dog that has intelligence it's like a few sessions and they're like holy cow he's, he's hopping up on there you know and then it gets to the point where you're probably at now where if you get the treats out he just runs and gets on place you know like i'm going i'm going i'm going gets, gets hard to get him off of there it's that's funny you say that because i we filmed a puppy update yesterday that we're going to drop this weekend and i got the place board out I'm getting stuff around and he was in the house and he saw me put the place board out in the yard and he came over to the door and sat down and, you know, we're working on all the steadiness stuff with the, right. with not letting him get out of the kennel until he's commanded those types of things or the crate. He saw that place board and he's sitting by the door waiting. I opened the slider. I was like, Oh no, across the yard, 30 yards, jumps on the place board and sits there and waits for me. <laughs> I was like, Dang, man. <laughs> I didn't even tell him, but it's the power of reward like that, man. It's 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 just such a useful tool. And and it's awesome because again, it, it doesn't that doesn't mean that your dog is gonna run and get on a dog stand and wait for you to put the decoys out in, in a year. Right. All that means is he's figuring out this whole thing where Todd and I go outside and we do work is really fun. Like it, it is awesome because I make him happy. He has this inner motor that's like, I want him to be happy. And I get food or grief. And that click is, is letting me know both of those are happening. And it's just, or, or the yes, or good, or whatever. Right. Whatever, whatever right. you're marking. It's just such a cool thing to see. They're in that phase. And you've got young kids, that preschool, kindergarten, church nursery phase where they learn like what is the world like what is this world like because i don't know so i'm apprehensive because what are those things that you know what's this big drop off the back of this pickup truck is that gonna hurt me you know like that kind of stuff and then when you can just take so much of that time of hey we go outside and this whole experience of training is fun it's 
it's good. You learn, like they don't, they're not thinking about what they're learning. They're just thinking about how much fun they're having, pleasing you, getting a reward. It's awesome. That's just, it's a really fun part of training. It's been, it's been a blast. You know, it's been, you talk about the kids. It's been fun. Not just for me, obviously I've done this before, not to this, not using CGA, obviously, but my wife's never trained a dog. No clue. Yeah. And so yeah. now she's running drills. She's working with him, especially this last week. My kids are working with him on little things, you know, simple things like, you know, down, you know, no jump, Hondo, no bite, you know, things like all that stuff. I love it. And it's, it's just really, really cool. And it's been fun to watch the progression. Like I said, there, there's some stuff. One of the things, like I said, week five, we haven't progressed to using uh, the heel command yet um but he's right at heel he's right there and i think and i think just about any day we could make that happen um and i'm so i'm going to introduce that probably over the weekend and work work into that it's real quick i did start him on um with a lead i didn't do it i did not heel training but i i I wanted to leash training because so many places we go i need control of him and yeah. i was like so in the, the first morning we did it you know i had the clicker i had the treat bag i had Mackinac on my right hand i had hondo on my left of course he looked like a little tarpon on the end of the on the end of the leash at first and i'm just using a slip lead you know a, a braided slip lead sure. and uh but within i would say within a block between having Mackinac there to model and me reinforcing when he was doing it right with the clicker and treat yeah, he was just not pulling, not at heel. He was right in that happy medium right there, man. He had it dialed fast, and that right. that's nice because yesterday Grace took him in for his second second round of shots and put him on the lead, and he was a gentleman, you know. And yeah. it was like Perfect. that's that's nice. Yeah, that's 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 good. And we we do realize even with Cornerstone, there's a there's a gap there of. Technically speaking, I don't like to introduce the lead until I have them healing really nicely off. Right. Because the lead is just a reinforcement. But there are a lot of situations and circumstances where people need a lead on a puppy. And so I think what you did is right. As long as it doesn't become, a you know, the alligator death roll, jerking them around, you know, come on, let's go. If you've got time to go on some lengthy walks, let them drag it around for a minute, you know, that kind of stuff. It's, it's good. Um, so yeah, that's that's a great way to do it. Yeah, so. it was it worked out. It was a little ugly for you know first couple minutes, but I expected that you know, and and I, that was one of the reasons. Great, my wife was like, "You're gonna take Mackinac too," and I said, "Yes," because I want him to mo- I want him to see model behavior. Yeah, yeah, it, and and of course, you know, Honda's not gonna learn to walk at heel because Mackinac walks at heel, but he will settle down and he will. I have like magic's outside. I haven't done a lot of formal stuff with magic and I had all my dogs in the driveway um, that are here at the new house. And, you know, they were all just sitting there and she's running circles between them and nipping at their ears and all that. And finally I just sat there. I was just answering emails while they all sat for a minute. And finally, after like three or four minutes, she's looking around and she just sat <laughs> It's like perfect, good girl. <laughs> yeah, she's not learning it necessarily because they're doing it, but she is like their behavior is rubbing off on her. Right. Uh, it's the same as if I bring a dog in the kennel that barks a lot, mine might start to bark a little bit. I'm like, no, 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 we're not, we're not going to do that. So, yeah, that's good. It's good, good, good plan. I'm glad he's on the lead, and, but I would definitely do those heel exercises off lead too, and then you know use. Um, one of the things I've been real keen on is using some type of fence or barrier for that um, because you'll have, you know, you're here, let me get that straight, puppy's here and you're healing and you stop and you treat. A lot of times when you stop, they do this yep. and look up. And yep. if, you, if you put a, a, a fence, you know, put something here and the puppy's here, when they go to turn, they, they can't turn there. It keeps their body posture on that straight heel, which is going to be important later on just for lining them up. You know, when we sit, you sit at heel with them. So as you move forward into that, just if you have a fence or a brick wall or something like that, 
my old house, I, one of the things when I left for the last time, I looked at this brick wall and I was like, man, how many puppies have I healed up and down that wall? I mean, <laughs> hundreds of sessions, you know, up and down that wall. And so, I bet. anyway. No, that's that's a good one. So I can't think off the top of my head how I pull that off um, with where I'm at. So the question I have then is what I've done in the last couple of sessions to combat that, to get him sucked up closer to me and alongside is I'm patting my leg. Yeah. And kind of encouraging him to get close, to come closer before I treat him. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. The only thing, the only thing is you're wanting to mark the proper behavior as quickly as, as possible. Sure. So, I mean, it works as long as you're also marking, like if he's walking correctly, you're, you're, you know, marking and dropping treats down with your foot right. hand. Um, and then when you stop, if he moves out, delay the mark, you know, pat, and as soon as he moves, click and, and treat. Then and that's, that's fine. Fine. Okay. That's good for me to know. Cause I'm like, I, as, when he, like you said, that's immediately what he does. He shifts frontward and sits, faces me a little bit. And I'm like, mm -mm, not going to treat you for that. So bringing him back to my side. So for people, other people listening, would another option in that scenario be a healing stick? Yeah. Um, no, a healing stick is a very different device. So a healing stick is, a, is more of an avoidance. I mean, people use them all different kinds of ways, if we're being honest. But the idea is that the tap on the puppy's rump from behind you will cause them to move closer to you and you you could i guess in tandem tap as soon as he gets in the right position click and reward i would say if you're going to go the healing stick route teach teach the way you're teaching until you know you can get a reliable heal and then if you want to reinforce that i can see that with a dog who's maybe a little bit hot and they know what it means to heal, but if there's any level of distraction, they get a little ahead, get a little outside, then the healing stick can be a, a reinforcement. Um, they just learn so much better through reward than they do through, you know, a healing stick is really a, a positive punishment. So you're adding something the dog doesn't like when the dog does an undesired behavior, right? Well, dogs, they can learn that way for sure. They just learn so much faster through rewarding something the dog does that he's supposed to do, which is what the, the click and treat is. And so if you can teach the, the positive way and then turn around and reinforce through positive punishment, and I don't mean that like you're smacking the dog hard. I just right. like, doesn't like being tapped on the rear end with the healing stick. So right. they're going to not scoot out. You know what I mean? I do. Let's say it's a lot easier to teach dogs what to do than it is to teach them what not to do. Yeah. No, I think I the and the reason I asked that was I don't even I don't even own a healing stick, but it was something that I thought about. Can I tap him and bring him closer to me? That was where the tapping on the leg thing, and then when he gets there, it's just interesting to get your feedback yeah. on on that. So yeah. other otherwise, I think we're we're right where we're supposed to be. Um you know, fetch, fetch play at this point. Obviously I'm you, when I throw a mark, he'll sit and I'll just say, Mark, you know, that Hondo, you know, fetch it up or whatever, building those, building those commands, those ideas of commands, but we're nothing serious. You know, it's not like, sure. it's not like I'm freaking out if he doesn't bring it back to me, you know, cause right now right. He, will grab, he goes and grabs something and he wants to do a victory lap a little bit, you know, and it's like when he brings it back to me, I'm like, good boy, you know? Yeah. We're just getting that breakthrough with, with magic. I mean, I've, I've been very, of course we just moved. I've been very like slow, yeah. but she was definitely a, uh, I don't want to say possessive, but just like, I'm the one that went and found this. I'm going to play with it for a minute. I'm going to run around. And then I just totally ignored her. And eventually she was like, he's not paying me any attention. And she'd come running back with it. And, Good girl. and like three days ago, I gave her some watermarks. And it was the first time that she brought them all like right back and sat. And I was like, all right, I'm making progress. She's learning that this game will be a lot more fun. We'll keep playing if we bring it back. So yeah, and that's that's what I was I was figuring you were gonna say that because it was like when we're outside in the yard or in a more controlled environment, it's like poop, 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 poop. 
and there's no real hesitation. Uh, I think my kids have been, have been helpful with that. And my wife, because he's constantly grabbing stuff that he's not supposed to have. Mm. And he's not going to destroy a shoe or or a sock or whatever, an Elsa doll in two minutes. You know what what I mean? So it's like, instead of chasing him around, teaching the kids, instead of chasing him around and making him, making a game out of it for him, call him, try to get him to come to you. And then, you know, when, when he gives it to you, that's just positive reinforcement. Good boy. You know? And I think that's helped with that stuff, but being outside anytime there's, there's distractions, that's when he's, he like, I'm going to go over here with this. Right. Um, and it's like, came out of the water the other day, went right by me and up on the bank and he's farting around in the grass. And pretty soon, like you said, I ignored him, called him a couple times, but then I ignored him. And then pretty soon here he comes with that little bumper in his mouth. And yeah. I was like, sweet. I, immediately, I chucked it back out in water and sploosh, out he yeah. went, you know. Yeah. The best thing you can do is ignore him. And then if you have a dog, like, I'm, I'm sure knowing his breeding, how he is, the best possible thing you can do is just start walking the other way. Yeah. Just walk away. Because he's going to be like, no, you can't. You can't. <laughs> you know, like, they'll see you leaving like, this isn't, uh, just take off toward you. And then that's immediately met with a good ball. You know, and then that's that they just eventually it clicks like, oh, I'm supposed to take this back every time. So, right. yeah, right. Yeah. And it's it's interesting. Um, that goes into recall because there's that stubbornness for to, to for lack of recall. Yes. Immediately. You know, it's like most of the time he's pretty good. But man, when there's something he's interested in, like a smell or something or something like that, he does not. He doesn't want to come, and yeah. and I anticipated that, but it's a it's really frustrating. It's very normal. Um, there's nothing that really frustrates me more than a dog not coming back when it's called. I had it uh, happen with one of my adults here who decided he wanted to see the neighbor across the street. Of course, my driveway is 280 yards, so it's not like right there. It's a long way. So yeah, we've. Uh, it's very frustrating, but with with most of them, you know what you're dealing with is is value. Um, the dog has curiosity. The river, the bush, the other dog, the kids, whatever it is, he thinks is going to bring him some type of, of payoff. Right? It's like I, I, the fun that's going to come with running over there. The whatever it is. And his brain for that moment, they're at that age, they're just always going to choose what they think is going to pay more. Right. That's a weird way to put it, but it makes sense. You put up a piece of kibble in one hand and a piece of raw chicken in the other hand, they're gonna grab that chicken. You know, they're 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 gonna they're gonna want the thing that they think pays more. So in those moments, what's happening is curiosity and wanting to explore whatever is more valuable to him than whatever is that you have to offer right and so what you just what you do in those moments is teach them the best you can that recalling is more valuable um and then when you know that they completely understand hondo here or tweet 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 means you come to me then you can start reinforcing it see a lot of people when they get frustrated at the very beginning they add a check cord and they start just reeling them in well then recall but really becomes because I have to, that is less reliable than recall because I want to. And I also know I have to. So it's, um, at that age, it's definitely like just figure out a way to add value to it. So one of the things that we'll do is if we have a puppy who likes to retrieve a lot, but also just doesn't love to recall, which is fairly common, man. If they want to explore the world, they want to go do their thing, especially at this age, then a lot of times I'll take a little a tennis ball or a dummy with me. And when they're out exploring and not coming back, I get their attention and I'm swinging it or bouncing a tennis ball. And they're like, oh, he's got that thing. And they come running back and, boy, and then give them a little fun dummy, you know, and, and just teach them like, hey, if you'll come back, it's going to be great. You know, yeah. and the worst thing you can do is get angry. Oh, 
Oh man, no kidding. Now the the payoff of coming back is doing this. Yeah. And the payoff of staying away is I don't get my butt whooped or I don't get yelled at or whatever. Right. So yeah, and I've been guilty of that. You know, right. I'm here, come on, let's go. And then you're like, well, if I'm in a puppy's head right now, I'm not coming to me. Like, you know, like, mm, no way. So yeah, it's uh, it's definitely <laughs> frustrating at this age. But um, of course, when they're older and they know and they don't come back, then it's like, hey, listen, dude, you you know the deal, right? But, well, and I had an interesting thing with him. The very first time I took him, we took him camping up on up in the mountains. His nose is it's amazing. It's, yeah. he, he can sniff stuff out that I'm just like, whoa, dude, that's that's impressive. We went for a little walk up through the woods behind the campground. We're up on the mountains. We're 9,000 feet. And we, I, I think I've been gone with him for just all of a sudden, he's just not there. And Mackinac's, you know, doing his thing around me. And I look and Hondo's like way over there, little tail whipping out from underneath this bush. And he comes out of there and I look and he's got a, he's got a dead grouse in his mouth i mean and i'm like good boy bring it here bring it here uh-uh he was gonna eat that bird <laughs> and i'm like i don't know how long that bird's been dead i don't know why it's dead and i'm like dude you can't have that no you no. can't have that and That's so that that got a little bit like <laughs> Good boy for finding it, but yeah, daddy, I'm going to take that away. You can't have that, buddy, you know, but it was, it's been amazing. And and he's, he's found a lot of stuff like that, that it's like, Hey, good boy. Good boy. Nope. Give me that. You know, but that grouse, I mean, he had it by the time I got to, he had it halfway down his throat. Just, and I'm like, no, no, we're digging that out of there. And I'm sorry, but I haven't. (laughs) <laughs> been there. oh goodness dogs you gotta love them but yeah. well barton i i appreciate you taking some time out of your dad's schedule to sit down with me and my I, kids, uh, you can hear them right now it sounds like hold on hey guys keep it down different age man they're, they're, oh i love it they're full throttle man they wake up hit the gas pedal i'm like hey i need a second <laughs> yeah exactly i get some coffee in me yeah. but no i appreciate it and i i appreciate you break walking through where i'm at not yeah. just for, not just for my benefit but for everybody's benefit that's going to watch this and going yeah that makes sense you know i think i think the healing thing what you talked about where they're going to turn and kind of face you a little bit to the front that's exactly what I am seeing with Hondo right now. Yeah. And just to get a, just to get a, your perspective, a pro's perspective, be like, yeah, you can, that works. What you're doing to correct that works. But think about this. I would have never thought of the barrier. Yeah. And I'm going to be looking around to see how I can implement that. Each the behavior you want while preventing the behavior that you don't want, where he doesn't even know it's being prevented. Right. You're just you're just setting him up for success in every way. Cool. Cool. Yeah, man. It's a great chat. Look forward to chatting again. Uh Sounds good. Soon and uh keeping up with all the progress. It's been really fun to watch. Real fun. Well, he's he's been great, and I thank you for that. And uh, like I said, I appreciate your time and look forward to chatting again. Absolutely, man. You guys have a good one. Stay cool. You too, man. Take care. All right, see ya.